Hey everybody, happy Monday! Today's video is going to be a little bit different than prior videos. I've got a couple of straggler pieces that I have um, sitting around for the last couple of days that didn't really make sense to put in the videos that we shot for SeaWorld and then for the video game convention. So there's a couple of shopping videos that I think would be really great to kind of put together. Um, one is folks are always asking about the outlet malls and, and shopping and things like that and I'm not a big fan of the outlet malls because I don't think that there's a lot of great um, deals to be scored. I think a lot of times it's stuff that's made specifically for like outlet stores that are for sale but we went over to Orlando Premium Outlets and I'm going to check out the footage on that a little bit and then yesterday I went over to the new mall Artigan Marketplace which replaced Festival Bay over in Orlando as well. And it's a lot of artisan shops and everything so you could be able to check a little bit of that out as well. But first what I want to be able to do is tie up a couple of loose ends because I realized today that uh, a couple of times on videos I did callbacks to saying I was going to give answers out for things and I never did. So the first one being like, we watch this clip now. By the way, something like this is really cool to me. Really cool. So with the exception of Wolverine, I'm so tired of Wolverine. But Somebody in the comments below, please tell me what these four characters have in common. Please let me know that somebody knows that because that is my favorite team of all time. So the answer was that uh, what tied those heroes together or what they had in common was that they were all part of the Invaders, which was one of my favorite comics growing up. And it was basically like the origins of Captain America, Bucky, Submariner and the Human Torch where they fought uh, Nazi Germany. So um, that was the answer. So sorry I didn't get back to you on that um, more timely. And the other question I asked for folks to give me an answer on is right here. So this bear is from Chuck E. Cheese. I would love if somebody could tell me in the comments what Chuck E. Cheese has to do with arcade games. Please, somebody, somebody let me know. Now the answer to that question is not as easy as there were video games at Chuck E. Cheese. The answer to that is that uh, the bear was from Chuck E. Cheese. It did have video games in common, but the reason why they had video games in common is that Chuck E. Cheese was actually founded by a gentleman named Nolan Bushnell, who was the founder of Atari um, and was responsible for Atari during their heyday in the 70s. And if you remember back to all of the good stuff that uh, went over in the collection in the room, this is one of the pieces that I have. That old shadow happening here. Uh, it's an Atari 2600 that's signed by Nolan Bushnell. So I am a huge retro um, video game person and was thrilled to be able to get Nolan to sign this. And I'm going to show you a little picture in a minute of uh, when we met Nolan. So there you go. And on that note, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, pieces of footage when we were out and about over the weekend checking out the different shopping areas in Orlando. Hope you enjoy. Hey, we're trying to get over to the outlet mall, but by the way, here is the Orlando Eye. We're like almost directly under it, so we're heading towards it. We're going to make a right at some point, but here you go. There's the Eye. Or part of it. Everybody's yeah, I've never been on the back side of this part thing. So there you go. So we came out to the premium outlet mall on International Drive and now we're looking at the Disney store. So let's check out all the stuff that they got in there. See how cheap it is. So here's Star Wars stuff that we saw at Star Wars Weekends. And now this shirt was 30 bucks, now it's $12.99. And the Inquisitor shirt is down to 10 bucks. So these glasses that were originally like almost 12 bucks are now five, and these limited pins that were so-called limited were 20, and now they're 8.99. So here's some generic Disney World stuff, Epcot, and Disney Cruise like T-shirts and stuff. So these Disney vinyls that they had at the Halloween um, celebration this year, they were 30 bucks. Now they're seven dollars. So I can lose all of my street cred, but I like this mug. It's pretty cool. So they have these Bud Lightyear jackets. They're still still in the, in the parks for 60 bucks. And at the character warehouse, they're 30 bucks. So you can pay full price or half price. 
And so they've got some Haunted Mansion stuff here too. Like this stuff is still in uh, Memento Mori for full price and it's 12 bucks here. And so they have the animated Olaf also that we were just playing with this a couple weeks ago at full price. He's on clearance also. 10 bucks off. Oh my goodness, they have Walter. He's on clearance also. He was 25 and now he's 13. Bro, come it! So in Star Wars toys, they have this. They've been trying to get rid of this for the last two years. So this is 15. Every year, this is brought up to regular price during Star Wars weekends, and then after Star Wars weekends, they drop it back down again. And the beautifully Disney stuff is now on clearance to $1.99. Lip gloss and nail polish. It's good for Jesse. So this is a bummer because I paid 60 bucks for this jacket or $56 and now it's marked down to 30. Boom, boom, boom. But I do love the jacket. And it's got a lot of use this year. Here's something that's obsolete. Fast pass holder. You'll never need that again. Hey, we're going to check out the Artigan Marketplace. This is a new shopping center mall that's replacing Festival Bay in Orlando. And I think a lot of it is artisan based. Crafts, they have new restaurants that are supposed to come here. Just grand open this week, so we'll check it out. So some of these stores have been here for a long time. Like the Shepler's has been here. There's a Bass Pro Shop that's been here. So one of the things I was looking forward to at this shopping center or mall was this Toby Keith's. I love this bar and grill. Just like we were looking forward for the Kiss Place, but you can see that even though the grand opening for the shopping center was this week, it's still under construction. They've got all this area outside cleared off though, so this place is going to be pretty massive. And so Berghoff's is coming here too. We're going to go to Foot Ruckers, and that's a big Artigan sign. I'm going to have to check out the mall after we eat. I like coming to Foot Ruckers. I got a side of onion rings and a bacon cheeseburger, but look at this bun. Like, all of the sesame seeds are just in one central location. Oh, look at this. There's people on stilts. Yay! Rope course up there, that thing is crazy. In the middle of nowhere. Oh, and they have like a whole bunch of like jewelry and stuff. People banging on five gallon drums. Let's see, you got like a bunch of art here. So there's a whole bunch of artists and things. You have a bakery, more art. Ah, more paintings. Courtney Love is up there. a honey store. And here's a cool art store that has like some Star Wars stuff. Wizard of Oz. More things. They got this cool thing here. Robots are awesome. That's a pretty cool thing. Look at those little robots. And you got some t-shirts. That's pretty nifty. Brooklyn style thread. Kettle corn. You gotta have some kettle corn. And you have like a resale place. So those things are pretty cool. They're motorized and you can rent them and different types of animals and ride them all around the mall. Still an awful lot of empty stores here for rent. So I finished taking a look around the Artigan Marketplace. Um, I honestly don't know if Orlando has enough um, hipsters to make it a viable place for people to shop at. There's, uh, it's predominantly artist based and, I, and all kidding aside, I don't know how much the local artists would have to gain by having uh, a rented space at this mall versus selling stuff through their own independent websites. I saw an awful lot of people kind of milling around because it's new and something to look at, but not a lot of people actually making purchases. And this mall has struggled in the past at keeping stores in, in its spots, so they kind of flipped the script and brought in kind of like the artist or craft community. And 
I, I just don't know if I see it working. It really kind of resembled like a flea market type of um, atmosphere. All right, so there you have it. And on that note, I'm going to wrap things up tonight. So thank you for all of the likes and the comments and the subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.